What's up everyone? 5280 Reefer, back at you again with a new episode. Before we get into it, just want to say sorry. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I posted my last video. Um, pretty much I had surgery done, got my sinuses cleared up, I can breathe better, but recovery took about 10 days and after that, I had to catch work up, so on, so forth. I'm still catching up at work, but getting back into the swing of things and getting back into the norm of my schedule and my life. But yeah, um, and yeah, another thing I would like to ask is if you do like the videos, toss it a like. If you don't like the videos, toss it a dislike, but always comment. I love talking to you guys and I love hearing from you guys. All right. So let's get into it. So in today's episode, what I wanted to talk about was basically in the time that like before surgery um, and then I had the surgery and then 10 days after the surgery and then about a week after that, uh, kind of catching work back up, my tank got extremely neglected, like very neglected. Um, and I'm kind of going to go over some of the things that happened to this tank. And I, I was and literally am a day away from a crash. But fortunately, today was a day I was like, hey, I'm going to clean the tank up. I'm going to scrape the glass. I'm going to scrape the back. I'm going to do my testing. Um, you know, change out my filter socks, clean out my skimmer, so on, so forth. So I started with cleaning up the tank. Then I looked at my RO reservoir and it had some slime growing inside of it. And uh, that could have been causing some of the issues in my tank, you know. Um, so I definitely took that apart, took my pump out, um, threw it in the sink and uh, started scrubbing it down with some water and a brush and uh, got that all cleaned up and put it back into position. Then I was like, all right, now that the filter socks are changed, the glass is cleaned, the back wall is cleaned for the most part. Um, let me do some tests on the water to kind of see how things are going. Uh, pH has been pretty stable, but I have noticed in the last uh, three, four days that my pH has kind of been lower than it normally is, uh, or at least it's been going lower during the nighttime than it normally does, uh, down to like 7.8, which it never does. It usually 7.98 is the lowest that it goes, but this time it went down to 7.88. So... Once I started doing my testing, um, my calcium was good. It's at 410. So that's perfectly fine. That's within the range I like to keep it. So nothing to worry about there. Alkalinity was at 6. And when I saw that, I was like, yikes. Like, that is, that, that's low, you know, because normally with, um, with the method of calcwasser dosing that I've been doing, uh, my, my alk has been between nine and 10, but I guess the tank has hit a maturity level where the, the corals are so big that the 5,200 mils of calcwasser that I'm dosing overnight is not enough to maintain the alkalinity anymore. So, um, that's fine that I caught it today. You know, I'm not going to do a, oh my God, I got to get back, get it back up, get it back up quick thing. No, it took a while for that alkalinity to come down. So I'm going to make sure it takes a while for that alkalinity to come back up. So all I've done for the alkalinity is I went from 5,200 milliliters of calc overnight up to 6,000 milliliters. So that, that's an 800 milliliter increase overnight. That's not very big. And it's... It should be enough to make a difference to slowly bring it back up um, to where I would like it to be. Um, then next thing, uh, the nitrates uh, tested good. Um, 
they tested at 15. That is perfectly fine. That's a great range to be in. That's a good number. Uh, phosphates were definitely not in a good zone. My phosphates were at 0.4. So almost half a PPM. Uh, it's quite a bit of phosphate. So during this whole time, I really haven't changed any of my carbon or my GFO or anything like that. So again, I didn't freak out and I wasn't like, oh my God, I got it. That's so high. I got to get it down right now. No, it was more of, okay, that's high. I definitely need to do something about it. So I took out my reactor, took out the old medium, uh, the old GFO and the old carbon. And this time I replaced it with a little bit less carbon and a little bit more GFO than I normally would do it. A little bit, not a whole lot. So that'll slowly bring it down, you know, back to the range where I like it to be, which is between like 0.1 and 0.2. That's normally where I like it. So it's about double that right now. So that's kind of where the chemistry of the water is. Uh, my magnesium was like at 1290, um, which is perfectly fine. Uh, no issue there. And then on top of that, I kind of let some of the corals grow into each other. So today I ended up fragging a bunch of this WWC um, yellow tips right here. It was starting to encroach on my uh, rainbow loom. And then here uh, with this green slimer and that uh, bubblegum digi or forest fire digi, whichever one it is, um, the green slimer was growing into the bubblegum. The bubblegum was growing into my Millie. And then my green slimer was also growing into my pink Millie. So I ended up cutting big chunks of the green slimer off. And then I ended up cutting big chunks of that uh, bubblegum digi off as well. Um, just to kind of give that Millie some breathing room and to stop some of the warfare that's been going on between those corals. <clears throat> um, now, another thing is to uh, the decent sized colony of red planet I had, um, had some big vermited snails in it. And I mean, these weren't your typical small little vermitids. They were like the really thick guys and the, they affected the growth pattern on that red plant. I mean the PC rainbow. So I ended up actually taking out that colony and then fragging it and getting a branch that didn't have any of the vermitid on it and then putting it back into its position. Now it is a frag that is not very colored up, but with time, I know it'll color back up and it'll grow out and be a wonderful colony. Another thing I have noticed over the last, I would say three, four months is I've had a crazy, crazy explosion of sponges all in the aquarium. I mean, they are growing everywhere. Every nook and cranny you look into, there's a sponge growing in it. Um, I mean, from everything I've understood, everything I've read, and everyone I've talked to, when you have lots of sponges, that's a good thing. So maybe that's why my SPS grows so well. Um, but in any case... You know, when running into issues like this and trying to figure out what you should do and how you should do it, none of it should be quick. You know, I, I always had an option of going to my LFS or even calling him and being like, hey, I need a hundred gallons of fresh salt water. Can you please deliver it or something like that? Because I, I can't make a batch that big myself. My mixing station lets me mix maybe 25 gallons at most at a time. And if I did want to do something substantial to where I would take out a, like 
a good part of it, I would need a lot, at least 100 gallons. By the way, this is that Red Planet frag that I took. It has, as I said, it is a little... It was on the bottom portion of the frag, but it's clean, so it'll do great. You can see some good polyp extension on it. Um, so yeah, instead of you know jumping into it and doing these drastic changes right away to get these numbers down or up or whatever what we're trying to do is definitely the wrong way to go about it. You know, if if you catch it, if you notice it. I'm sure if I let it keep on going like that and I kept on neglecting it, I would have had a tank crash. Oh yeah, and here in this picture, um, this por portion, you can see a bunch of different sponges. Like you, to the right, you can see those white-ish sponges. And then right there in the middle, it's like a pink purple sponge. I've got yellow sponges. I mean, sponges for days. Um, but yeah, doing quick things like that, it's never a good idea. You know, it, if I let it keep on going, I would have had a tank crash. If my alkalinity started getting down to like the fours and fives, I'm sure I'd have lost colonies. If my phosphates kept on climbing to the one PPM, whatever, maybe even further than that, I'm sure I would have had coral mor mortalities because of that too. But catching it right at the moment kind of let me avoid all of that. So now the whole game plan is going to be to slowly bring my alkalinity back up within the next few weeks. And then slowly bring my phosphates down with over the next couple weeks. Um, and just kind of get back into the part of being with the tank, testing weekly, taking care of stuff when it needs to be taken care of and not letting it get to this point. I, I think I have gotten even lucky now that I haven't really lost anything um, because I mean, 0.4 phosphates is pretty high. I know there's some people out there that run one PPM phosphates all the time without issues. But that's not how I run my tank. So I don't think my coral are really used to those kind of numbers. Um, and definitely the biggest thing is going to be the alkalinity. You know, the alkalinity being six is, that's pretty low. I think if it went a lot further down than that, I, I would have most likely had a lot of SPS mortalities. Um, but again, I'm just thankful that it did get to that point slowly over time instead of just being sudden. But yeah, guys, just don't rush it, you know, slowly guide your tanks back to where they need to be, where you want them to be. Anything we do quickly never ends up good unless it is like some heavy metal issues you have or poison or some chemical accidentally got into the tank, then yeah, do some massive water changes, throw in some Purit, some Cuprazorb, some Metazorb, or some stuff like that to get those heavy metals and chemicals out, and so on and so forth. But for your standard elements like nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, those things you can slowly adjust and get them back to where you need them to be. Don't rush it. Take it easy. I am planning to visit my LFS here in the near future. Um, so I'll be making a video of my visit there, the coral selection they have. I'm probably going to be picking up a couple of pieces myself to throw in the aquarium, to add some diversity of coral species in the tank, and to add some more color and hopefully fill in some of the spots that don't have anything there. I really am struggling with my choice of rockscape. I definitely will be going a different route next time. I'm really, really regretting it. But the corals and fish are seeming to do great. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys hearing me out and hearing me rant. I do enjoy your guys' viewership. 
Hope you guys come back more often. Thanks a lot, Dad. Come again. Um, come. Keep on riffing. Yeah, that was my son, guys. He just wanted to say thank you for watching our videos and stopping by and to remind you guys to come back for more. As always, guys, you have a wonderful day and keep on reefing. <laughs>